This is an absolutely stunning one. Many people would consider this a highly uncommon or even a rare snake. Hello guys, welcome back to Southern Thailand, to the incredibly dense, rich, liana-covered rainforest here down in Nakhon Sitamarat province. I'm about to get out in the forest. I'm starting early tonight. The plan is to head out around 6.15 because by that point you can already see around the forest and I'm going to spend a lot of the night out. I'm going to be out at least until midnight, probably until around 1am. So without further ado, let's get started. First find of the very, very late afternoon, early evening is this little horn frog, Xenophrys genus. I uh, accidentally rustled it up out of some leaf litter, but it's the sort of cousin of Pelabretrachis nasuta, the Malayan horn frog, but yep, it's gonna send him back into here. First snake of the night, just about as it gets dark, is this keeled slug snake, Parius carinatus. Yeah, I know this looks just like the ones I get in Hua Hin, but it is a different species. This is the real keeled slug snake, the OG, the original, and uh, is one of the most common snakes in the area. Same as uh, the other species, bird moriaes, up where I live, this is extremely common in these southern forests, although you do not get it in the agricultural lands like you do bird moriae. These guys do differentiate though, they have a very different head. If you compare this to the ones back home, it's a lot larger, rounder, and uh, their patterning is generally a bit varied. But yeah, first snake, I'm not gonna photograph this one since I've seen them a million times before found this big cert. I'm not sure which species actually occurs in this area, whether it's Lecagulae macrotubicalis. I don't think it's macrotubicalis, it doesn't look like it, but you can see it's a sizable fellow and uh, another reptile in the very early moments of this night. Very nice. Check it out. This funky frog here is Leptobrachium smithi. You see it's got the yellow top half of the uh, eye. Yeah, really uh, funky little frog which kind of plays dead when you disturb it and just goes flat but when they're chilling they like sit uh, like a dog on its hind legs it's pretty funny these are very popular I'm gonna make sure I don't tread on him on the way back okay guys second snake of the night is this lovely uh, integrade morph Benkulu cat snake this is an absolutely stunning one it, it's just in the transition between the juvenile pattern which is stronger banding to the adult pattern, which is more green with fainter pinkish bands. And that is such a good combination. Like it's got the green of an adult, but still with very strong patterning in these orange bands. This is a very common snake in the south of Thailand, a common nocturnal colubrid. And uh, we get to see a lot of these on our southern trips. So there's no surprise we've turned this one up tonight, but with this particularly beautiful individual, I'd say, this is a very welcome second snake of the night. The species is often confused with Boiga trapezii because they've got, I, I guess you could say a similar head shape, similar body shape for sure, very slender Boiga, but the pattern and actual details of the head on this one are totally different. They are, I don't know how people were ever confused about these. They're undoubtedly the same species. I found an interesting tree frog here. I'm not sure exactly what genera it's in, uh, but it's for sure one I don't think I've seen before. So might get my camera out for this one. All right, guys, it is, it's been a while since I saw the last snake. Um, seeing one snake per hour isn't exactly unusual here in the Southern forest, but uh, it's been like an hour and a half since I saw that Boiga benkuluensis, I think, and still nothing. Not even much frog or lizard activity. So let's hope that changes soon. I'm going to keep grinding and uh, try and ch change these fortunes around ASAP. Okay, it took almost two hours to get the next snake of the night. But uh, we turned up quite an interesting one, which I'm sure many of you uh, will not be familiar with. This extremely slender, dark and heavily keel scaled snake is uh, the dusky or slender wolf snake. Like an albofuscus, albofuscus referring to that white venter you see there. Uh, these guys are kind of tricky to. Oh, bear with me a second. 
these guys are super wriggly and hard to get uh, footage of in hand so but yeah this is not a common species by any means but i've been absolutely spoilt for these recently um, on trips I've done off camera with Explore Herpetology, we managed to see three of these. And, and so this is the fourth since I've been in Thailand. And many people would consider this a highly uncommon or even a rare snake. But now you can get a good look at it. These have really interesting habits. I found this one just hunting around this dead tree here, which is a very, very common place to find this species. But I've also found this species hunting a skink around the edge of a pool of water and then diving in the water to hunt the skink once it fleed. Um, they are often on the ground, but also extremely good climbers. I've seen them scaling the side of uh, tree trunks and yeah, generally always a, an interesting snake to find. I'm always happy to find one of these. And they really do feel unlike any other snake in my opinion. They, they almost feel like rough plastic. It's extremely weird. I can't describe the texture to you. You'll just have to come to Thailand and find one for yourself. But yeah, like an albifuscus, dusky or slender wolf snake. I, I still haven't decided what to call these. I like both names, honestly. Well, here's the first non-gecko lizard I've seen on this entire walk. Um, this is a uh, Canthosaurus meridionalis, meridional. I can't remember the exact taxonomic uh, name because it is rather recently described, but uh, it's a very pretty Acanthosaurus. These horned lizards are some of the coolest things you get in the forest here. And uh, this one is no exception. It's got a beautiful yellowish green color. What a cool animal. This is really random, but maybe too dumb to show. But uh, I found a bit of snake spine just lying on the path, like the part of the spine of a snake. How uh, intriguing. Just found this Acanthosaurus running around in the middle of the night. Not too sure what it's up to or what disturbed it, but uh, yeah, it was just running around the ground. I was like, what the hell is that? These are really beautiful, this species. I'm so impressed by them. This is my first time ever seeing these. I've never seen the Acanthosaurus at this location before, so yeah, ace. Guys, I found a gentleman. I found a fellow. <laughs> I have found Sir. <laughs> Hello, hello. Okay, just got back to the room. Final herp of the night is this uh, Cools Gliding Gecko. Gecko Kule, ex Taikazoon Kule. It's just on the roof of my little place here. But yeah, that's gonna, that's gonna wrap it up tonight. Um, wasn't the best night. Uh, I saw a lot of stuff, but not too many snakes. Um, considering I put in like double the amount of time as last night and end up with the same species. It was just kind of below my below my standards, but not necessarily unusual for the South. But uh, due to how just dead it felt around here in general, so dry, I think I'm going to move on tomorrow and head over to a no new spot. So I'll pick up when I wake up tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's do this. All right, guys, it's the following morning around uh, 9.30 a.m. And I'm headed out of this current location. It was fun. Um, I did see a Naja Sumatran, a Sumatran Cobra on the road yesterday, but aside from that, not the most interesting snakes here. So we're gonna go on to a new spot, as I said last night. Uh, I think we're gonna head down to another popular spot of mine. So it's about two hours drive from here, maybe one hour, 45 minutes. I could probably get there in an hour and a half. So I'll pick up with you either en route or when we get there. Just getting checked into the uh, new place I've showed up at. It's a uh, national park I used to go all the time when I was a kid. So many great memories, so many lifers here. I have been here a few times this year and it's been very productive. So uh, yeah, this is always a go-to place, which is great, but they're sorting out my stuff. So I gotta go now. All right, just got to the bungalow. They gave me a, a VIP treatment, carried all my stuff over on scooters from my car, but damn, they've just redone these uh, special bungalows here and they are so nice. So. This is what I'm staying in here. And I can give you a little look on the inside of mine. You see these wooden steps up from the ground. And it looks kind of a ramshackle, but uh, you go inside. It's actually extremely pleasant. It's got everything you need. All the windows and gaps mosquito netted up. And uh, yeah, this is like the definition of staying somewhere in the jungle where it's being kind of immersed in your surroundings, just tucked away here. Nobody else staying in the park right now, just me. 
I'm going to have a great time here. I'm going to go out into the forest now during the day, see if I can turn anything up. Oh, and this is all for 350 baht, by the way. 350 baht. Incredible. Okay, just touched down the forest here. I had a little rest for a bit because uh, well, I was tired. It was another early day and I got to rest up for quite a long afternoon and evening I've got in store. So right now I'm just going to go and check out a cave that I know of. And then I'm going to get ready, go have dinner and head straight out herping afterwards. So uh, let's see if we can find anything on this late afternoon walk. Just see my first diurnal snake of this walk. It's a young triangle keelback. Uh, I will put a circle around its head poking out from the water, but it's right there. I don't think I'll be able to catch this. It's aquatic and I don't feel like swimming and I don't have my tongs on me. Oh my God, guys, while looking for trying to get a better shot of this keelback, look what I just spotted. Mangrove cat snake resting above this stream as well. So two for the price of one in this little clearing right here. That's a good start to a daytime walk. The average snakes you see on a daytime walk is like 0.1. So huge overperformance in the last 30 seconds here. Okay guys, I've switched over to my big camera since the iPhone can't quite reach. Unfortunately, this is all you're gonna see of this guy since I'm not going to uh, wade in and wrangle it out. There's absolutely no point. I've seen this species before, showed it on the channel before. So I'm just gonna leave it in situ. I did see the keel back again, but it's so skittish. I can't, I can't get close to it at all. But uh, yeah, two snakes on a, on a day walk, including this lovely big mangrove cat snake sleeping so pleasantly above this stream. All right, some of you may remember this cave from my last Southern Thailand video. I think it was the second video I did on the channel. This is uh, my favorite cave in Southern Thailand. I know the one we went to the other day was nice, but let me look, frog. Little. Sometimes you get strange animals dwelling around the cave entrance. Um, ones you wouldn't necessarily expect to be in a cave. They just use this as shelter. But when you go into the cave is when you find the true cave dwelling animals, most of the time at least. Let's see if we can turn anything up. Ah, check it out. Just spotted our first cave racer. It's a typical one for this cave with that. It's breathing very heavily. Do you think it's eating? It's behaving strangely. Hmm. Okay, he's coming out. No, he's not eating. I'm gonna grab him. Okay guys, check it out. I uh, didn't realize because this part of the body was hidden that he's not eating a meal. He's actually just eaten a meal and has a large, I would presume, bat-shaped bolus in its stomach. So I'm not going to touch it much. I put him down here and he just kind of relaxed. Uh, I guess maybe the meals make him a bit lethargic. These are usually very twitchy, but god damn, the population from this cave is pretty. Like those bluish greys on the head, the kind of speckling they have on the body, and of course the yellow stripe. This one's just a sub-adult. They get a lot bigger than this. You would have seen the last video, the one we found was maybe double the size, but the juveniles are extremely pretty and man, uh, this cave is definitely the best spot for them that I know of. When I lived in Thailand as a kid for a year, I didn't manage to turn a single one of these up. They can be surprisingly difficult to find at times. You really wouldn't think it. You wouldn't think so, but uh, some caves, undisturbed caves where people don't go, are generally the only place where you can consistently turn these up and this cave is very rarely entered by people which is why I like it so much. I enter maybe, well, depending on whether I'm living in Thailand or not, once every few months which is definitely enough to maintain a healthy population not disturb them so much but this is a really nice pose so I'm going to take a couple pictures real quick and then just leave them be. Oh what the hell? I know you're going to think this is the same snake but I absolutely promise it isn't. I can go back and show you the other one, but I just found a second juvenile Ridley eye with a meal in its stomach. Here, look, you can tell this meal is substantially different to different shape to the first one. That's the only proof I have because they're round about the same size. This one's a bit smaller and it's got a smaller head so you can see my, oh wait, no, you never got to see my hand next to it. But uh, this one is also defensive, which the other one wasn't at all, but he wasn't here when I walked in the cave and the Ridley I have been on a feeding frenzy today. <laughs>
This one's got such a nice yellow on it, but uh, yeah, I'm definitely not going to disturb this one, especially as we got a good look at the last one, but you get to observe these guys in action. To think that they never see light in this cave, but he can see me thanks to my light and he's ready to give me some, that's for sure. Anyway, just going to leave you here, bud. Another reptilian inhabitant of this cave is the Certidactylus lecagulli geckos. Pretty cute little things. And surprisingly large too. This is a small one too, they get significantly bigger. As I leave, I just want to say that this cave has such a good population of those. Like those two individuals there were both different individuals to what we saw last time. The other two, we were like double the size. So yeah, really, really positive. I'll say about this spot here that of all the spots I used to frequent when I was young and lived in Thailand, this is the only spot I believe which has actually got better for herping over the years. Like you see more here now, species and diversity wise than you used to. And more numbers too. Very, very positive. All right, officially done with my daytime walk. Four snakes total, although two are in the cave, so I'm not sure how much they count as daytime snakes, but yeah, very productive. I'm uh, gonna drive out to get dinner now, and then the evening's gonna be all about the forest. So uh, I'll catch you in the next episode.